If sin is already paid for on the cross, sin does not send people to hell. It's the rejection of God's forgiveness and redemption that sends people to hell. So then how would you reconcile people who perhaps practice or believe that homosexuality or any other sin is acceptable, yet they claim a real relationship with Jesus? Are these people going to heaven or hell? And where is the line drawn when it comes to rejecting the saving grace of Jesus? Um, The fact that sin is paid for does not mean that sin doesn't send you to hell. And so I'm rejecting your premise. So, uh, you know, when you're, when you're talking about the, the payment for sin, uh, the, same, the payment for sin is made, uh, but the receiving of the payment for sin is the issue. And that's where, that's where salvation comes in. And so um, you were right, it's the rejection of Christ. It's one major sin, uh, the major sin, uh, that gets a person in hell, but when they go to hell, they pay for their own sin. And so the wages of sin, the Bible says, is death. And the death that's being spoken about in that passage uh, in the book of Romans is not physical death. It's separation. Physical death is separation from your body. The death that's being spoken about in Romans is spiritual death, and that's separation from God forever. Okay, and so the theology there needs to needs to be tweaked a little bit, okay? And so then the, then the second part was uh, um, about uh, people who are in sin and claiming to have a relationship with God. Yeah, so they're saying a real relationship with a God. Are these people going to heaven or hell? And where is the line drawn when it comes to rejecting the saving grace of God? Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, here's a passage for you. It's, it says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, that's greedy people, nor drunkards, that's drunks, nor revilers, that's uh, people who uh, are over the top, you know, basically fighting with people, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. And then he says, and such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Um, And so there's a list for you. Those people are not going to heaven. Um, Ephesians chapter five has another passage that deals with this. And in that passage, Paul says this, let, uh, well, it, it, it says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, that's telling dirty jokes, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Okay, so there's another list for you. Um, there's another one in Galatians chapter five. And in that passage, Paul talks about the difference between the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. And he says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, that's pharmacia, that's, that's illicit drug use, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, that's, that's tearing churches apart, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, that's drinking parties, and the like of which I told, tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so, you know, all of those things are clear. And so the issue here is that people practice these things. And so when you're, when you're talking about somebody who, um, uh, whether somebody's going to hell or whether they're going to heaven or whether they have a false profession of a relationship with Christ, it's not a matter of whether you've done these things uh, because each one of us ha- have done some of those things. And sometimes we struggle with those things with the emphasis on struggle. We struggle with those things and we're constantly turning from them and asking God to forgive us for them. But if we're practicing those things, it's the idea that I do these things, I rationalize them, I justify them, I'm good with it. 
and you know, I'm, I'm not willing to change. That's an indication that you are not a believer. And, and so uh, again, Paul puts these warnings in these different passages uh, written to Gentiles, which is what most of us are. <laughs> you know, uh, and we still have this Gentileness uh, um, where we come out of the world and we think it's okay to take the junk that we were involved in and make it part of our life in Jesus. And it's not okay. And so there are things that we need to be turning away from. And you know, again, that's what the lists are for. And so if a person is living in those things, they are unrepentant about it. Um, I, uh, and they told me that they were a Christian. I'd go, I'd read them the passage and go, now tell me whether you're a Christian. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that a lot of times people are getting patted on the back, you know, on the top of their head way too much. Uh, in these arenas. God does not mess around with this stuff. These are things that Jesus died for and it's to be repented of. It's to be turned away from. And so, uh, you know, again, there's that. So unrepentant sin is an indication that there has never been uh, a real relationship with Jesus Christ. And so it's not that the sin is going to... uh, be the thing that gets you into hell, like you were talking about earlier, but you gotta keep in mind you know, the, the theology on that. It's not the, the fact that the sin is gonna get you into hell, it's the fact that the sin is gonna harden your heart and you're gonna end up in a place where you're rejecting Christ. And anybody who can do these kinds of things and then pretend to have a walk with Christ has a hardened heart. And that's, that's the problem with sin. And uh, they ultimately get to the point where uh, they're uh, rejecting everything about Jesus that, they're, uh, that it actually saves us. And so um, uh, Christians need to, need to take uh, sin and holiness seriously. Without holiness, no one will see God, is what it says in Hebrews chapter 12. And it's a practical, practical holiness. And again, that comes from a, a real relationship with Christ. The passage in Galatians goes on to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. So if I'm walking in the spirit, I'm not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if I'm, uh, if I'm somebody who's living that kind of lifestyle, I have no business claiming the name of Christ. Okay, now let me do this from the, from the, from the other end. There's lots of people who have, a, who have a struggle when they come into a relationship with Jesus and they're dealing with all kinds of things. Depends on how deep you were in it before you became a Christian. I was, I was just talking to a guy this last weekend um, I, I had uh, talked about some convicting things and he came up to me and he goes, Steve, I'm, I'm struggling in all these different areas and sometimes I don't even know if I'm a Christian. And I go, uh, you know, the key word there is struggling. I, and I go, did you struggle before you were a Christian? And he goes, no, I embraced it totally. And I go, and that's the difference. That's the difference. Once you become a Christian, there's a struggle. There's a, there's a desire to turn away from these things. There's a desire to please Christ. And that's what you're looking for. Uh, the, the desire to love the Lord, the desire to please with him, the desire to walk with him. And so anybody that I've ever known, whether they were involved in fornication or adultery or sorcery, having a drug problem, or in, you, you, know, you can go through the, through the rest of drunkenness, all of this kind of stuff, anybody that I've ever known that actually gave their life to Jesus, they may struggle with those things for a period of time, but there's gonna be a victory that takes place. There's gonna... There's, there, there's going to be a coming out of this stuff. And there's always a desire to turn away from those things. And so that is just an indication of the work of God in your life. You, you, know, you can't live with the creator of the universe and do vile things that he's opposed to without having your spirit uh, being convicted by the Holy Spirit. It, it cannot happen. And so if somebody tells me that that's exactly what's happening, the problem is that they don't have the Holy Spirit. That's the problem. Or uh, they've hardened themselves to the things of God. So is that good? That's good.